Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to dominate on Kindred Jungle. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to mark the enemy jungler. This gives you the most pressure on the map for a potential invade or for just counter ganks or 2v2s in general. For your runes, you're gonna want Press the Attack, Triumphant Alacrity with Coup de Grasse, alongside Ravenous Hunter and Sudden Impact. You do have other options for your secondary runes, things like River Walking and Nimbus Cloak are solid, or you could go for Free Boots 5% CDR, but overall this page will give you really good bang for your buck and scalability. Uh, Kindred plays best against melee champions, things that outrange her give her huge issues, things like Graves hard counter her because of his built in free armor, Elise gives her issues, uh, melee champions who can consistently bridge the distance between them and her can also be problematic, uh, particularly assassins, especially if her ult is on cooldown. Kindred is a mid tier mid tier, kind of where Warwick and Vi are at right now, so if you don't want to play Graves and you're looking for a ranged jungler, Kindred is probably gonna be your next best choice. You're gonna to wanna to start W, then get Q, then E, and max Q first, W second, and E last. If you need to see everything all in one spot, just go to the very start of the video. You can find it all there. Normally on Kindred, you're looking to do a three camp clear, then an invade. I don't think I can beat Hecarim in a 1v1, so we're gonna hold off on that. Instead, we're gonna be farming it up just a little bit more. Make sure you stay inside your circle to keep your wolf up, and every time you Q, Starts with inside the circle, it puts it on a much lower cooldown, which is quite nice. Back to full HP. We're gonna do our wolves next. The only camp Kindred tends to truly skip, like every time in her first clear, is Raptors. She takes a lot of damage from them, and they take a while to clear since she doesn't have the best AoE. So if you do a semi full clear, it's typically a five or four camp clear, skipping Raptors. We're gonna go get a red buff, then we can do golems. If Tom Kench was shoving up, we could do red straight into gank, and mid doesn't really look gankable right now. Not particularly. We'll keep an eye on Ari, but she seems to be playing back. We're gonna kite this back. If you think someone's invading you, you should turn on your oracle lens so you can check for wards and also check bushes without having to enter them. Generally, Kindred doesn't get invaded too much since she, since she is a decent clearer, but it can happen. Got the red buff, you don't have to, that was <coughs> kind of risky and I'm choking on a nut right now. I don't even know what, oh it's a peanut, that's a shame, <laughs> a peanut of all nuts. Technically not even a nut, it's just a legume. So yeah, we've done a 5 camp clear, we are pretty much full HP. And uh, we should be able to fight on Scuttle Crab. We're gonna let him get to it first, ooh this is free. straight into him. I really need some help from Akali here, not gonna lie. Alright, this guy's fucked. He's gonna have to try to turn and kill me. Like flash Q me or something. I'm gonna Q on top of him, hit him with an E. He must not have flash. Oh, he actually had it. He just didn't want to die. He could have 100% killed me if he would have used flash to kill me. But then Akali would have finished him off. Yeah, Kindred's got a lot of outplay with the melee champions. Her scuttle taking ability is quite poor, as you can tell. You have no way to scrape its initial shield since you don't have any hard CC. All you have is the slow on your W. I mean, on your E. But that does not. It has to be a hard CC. Slows don't count. Always starting to push up a bit. Whenever you get a kill, make sure you mark a new champion, preferably one you're going to gank. I'm just going to do a bit of damage as I'm crossing through. She really should try to avoid trades like those. With that being said, I am going to have to avoid that scuttle crap since I'm now low on HP. Hopefully Cassiopeia does something with that lead though. We'll just push back into our jungle. Ash looks like she's coming to support us, but I don't trust it. Looks like Hecarim's not on there yet, but okay, he is now bot lane. I'm glad I didn't go. I, that could have been really, really bad. Just backing up the Ash, pushing Hecarim off. She didn't burn heal or flash there. It was already on cooldown, so we don't really miss too much there. I think Hecarim's just gonna go for that Scuttle Crab. Looks like Seraphine might be rotating into my jungle. All right, now she's going back. I should be safe. We, we wanna go ahead and set up a recall here. We've already gotten some decent pressure onto the map. Got a kill top on the jungler. Got Kench's flash, pressured the Ari. So uh, we can go ahead and back. At this point, we have nothing to really gank, and we can get some decent item choices. So if the enemy team is full squishy, you can get things like Gale Force or even a Immortal Shield Bow. 
Otherwise, Quick and Slay is your best bet since they have a true tank, Tom Kench, an HP tank. It's a fantastic. And Hecarim is kind of of a tank. He's more of a bruiser. So we'll get some high value out of uh, the Kraken Slayer. Excited to build that. And then we'll probably go for... We can either go for a bit of Life Slot at that point, or we could go for Storm Razor into something like Infinity Edge. Pretty much anything that gives damage or crit is good on Kindred. And then we can round off our build with, with like a Lifeline item. I guess our only Lifeline option is... Uh, since the Immortal Shield Bow is is a mythic her only lifeline option will be ma wait range champions can buy sterics now can't they it's a lot worse on range champs though it's a lot lot weaker you don't typically build that on range champs because it is weaker for them even though they do have that option i'm not gonna even put my mark on r she's just gonna ult away to where if i put my mark on her i'm not gonna get anything out of it just gonna waste its cooldown just help her shove. I'm not gonna try to take the CS from her even though she's kind of missing it all anyways, for whatever reason. She has mana, I don't know why she's not using her E. Heal him back up. Hecarim's dead. Looks like my bot lane killed her. Hecarim, it looks like his red buff was probably up since none of them have it. I could uh, go kill him on that. Stay within the side of the circle. You see it's cooldown, it's about to end anyway so I can Q on the outside of it. All right, we're level six. We're ready to make something happen. This is, we have this pink worded, so. I'm gonna put my mark on one of them as they step up here. I'll put it on the EMF. Seraphine's gonna die too fast. It takes a few seconds for it to uh, fully metastasize. Nice, fantastic. Very, very good. I don't, I didn't actually get the mark there, unfortunately, but MF should get back to lane quite fast. I think I could probably kill her under turret. MF has really high movement speed, and uh, she had a four second faster respawn than Seraphine since she died first, so I need Lux to step up here. Actually, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> Hackram's here. There's just no way this is gonna work. Yeah, I can't. With Hecarim being here and Lux coming, and with Seraphine coming back, now Hecarim's probably going to walk into me, so this could actually turn out still. I'll just W, E, auto attack him, Q into him, and I could still go bot lane here. My W is on cooldown, but my Q is up, so is my R. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own on this one. Nice. She's going to need to step inside of here. That's a big heal. Kindred R gives you a big, big heal to anyone who's inside it at the end. I should leave these minions. Actually, I'll go ahead and push. I think we have a minion advantage after I hit the wave, so I kind of need to just keep going at this point. Nice, nice. Get shoved in. We're at a really huge advantage. It's at this point in the game, you can start going for more and more of your marks. Looks like Hecarim's over there. We'll put our mark on him. I think it's a solid one. We have such a big lead on him, he can't fight us even if we're lower on HP than him. Once you've built yourself up a lead in the game through smart pathing and good quality ganks and proper farming, now whenever there is a mark that's a little bit sketchy, as long as you're paying attention, it's much easier to go for it. If you're behind, you can't really go for any sketchy marks because you'll just die by default if anyone shows up. So, something to think about. I do kind of want to back here. I know Cast is trying to bait it, but I can get my full Kraken Slayer. It's a massive buy. If you can full your full first item, might as well go back. And I uh, guess we'll just pick up a long sword. Do you have a lot of good options? I'm not a huge fan of Fan Dancer right now. It's not that good since it's not a lifeline item anymore. It's not near as good as it used to be. So Blade of the Room King is good here. Storm Razor is good here for the slow mainly. Bloodthirst is not bad. Navari Quick Blades, you don't typically want to get. And if you do get them on Kindred, you'll get it third item at the soonest. Because you want to get as much crit as possible before you buy it. The more crit you have, the more effective that item is. Yeah, I need to go top. I saw the moment I saw Hecarim. Yeah, that's obvious. I'll probably kill both of them here. Since they're melee, I can kite them out. And I'm fed. So, we'll see. 
She kind of kited away from me. They don't know I'm here though. I'm gonna jump into the wall for an auto attack reset. Try to stay on top of this guy. Red smite him. Got him. Yeah, that's a... I could actually leave this wave. Do you see how they have more minions? Uh, I'll clear one more. If I left too many, it might crash into her turret before she can get there, but I left it at a slight advantage, so that's actually going to push towards Akali. At least it should, yeah. You see how there's one more minion and it's closer to this turret? That means their minions are going to reinforce first and they have more minions, so... This should be a nice little treat, nice little consolation prize for the Akali, and uh, it's going to screw over the Kench. We're going to put our mark on Akali, I mean, uh, on Ari here. We're coming in for the gank. I'm going to have to use my Q to dodge her charm. She held on to her charm. I queued a bit early. I was getting nervous. I need to get away from that though. I think Hecarim's in the area with the way they're acting. Yeah, I think Hecarim. I think they think I'm going for the mark right here. I think Ari's looping around, but I'll just go in for this gank. They think. All right, yeah, I just have to go for it. Hecarim's got me pinched from behind, but my teammates need me. Oh shit, luck. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's fine, I guess. I'll just shove the wave. If you're gonna shove it, make sure you shove it right and you actually crash it into the turret. Then we bot lane's dead. Kench is occupied. We could probably sneak a dragon here. It seems pretty safe. Hecarim's still not full item. You can't really match me. Even if I'm in the middle of this and he walks in on it, there's not much you can do about it. Worst case scenario, he outsmites me. Like there, I was 30 damage off. But I'll kill him if he comes in, obviously. And you can dash over small walls, like this one you can go over. There's a lot of other walls you can jump over on Kindred. I'll try to show you. Just pay attention where I'm jumping this game, and you'll see some walls that you can go over. I'll try to make a point to specifically go over it, even if it's not ideal. Like this. Or you could go like this, any smaller medium wall. Or edges of big walls. There's like some small edges of big walls you can flop over. I'd recommend practicing the practice tool. Your Q does give you a burst of movement speed for, I think it's like two seconds. Attack speed for four seconds. Wow, it's longer than I thought. So if you are trying to break a word real fast, you can do that. MF's under turret, we're gonna put our mark on her. We have her pinched. Kindred's good in dives like these if their enemies are super low. They have nowhere to go and it's a guaranteed mark. Obviously MF is stranded and she's she's dead. She should just run into my bot lane and let them kill her. When I marked her, the worst thing she could do is what she just did. She needed to just run at my bot lane and kill herself essentially. Cause now I just got a mark, which is uh, Kindred Shine. Seraphine's gonna run up. She's just gonna run back like a sheep most likely and I'll kill her. If she's smart, she'll ward into the bush from the wall, so I won't be able to see her when she wards it. Okay, yeah, she just killed herself too. You need to assume as a bot laner that the jungler's still there farming the camp. If you don't, you're going to put yourself in a weird situation like this, or you're going to get yourself killed. This is why aggressive junglers, if they can build a lead, are so dangerous. They can put the enemy laners at a constant state of losing. And what Hecarim needs to do, especially since he's behind, is he needs to focus on a lane where I'm not. So if he they, if they see me bot lane, he needs to be mid or top and just avoid me. Because even if he shows up, they're going to lose the 2v2 or 3v3 since I have a lead. I'm saving my Q. And if they have key skill shots like a Lux Q, like a Lux Snare, Morgana Snare, Ari Charm, you need to hold on to your Q until they use it. If you're going to put yourself in a 1v1 situation like that in particular. I'll put my mark on Kench. I'm gonna go over this back wall. I ran out of my my W. I accidentally ran out of my W, which I no longer got my Qs on a decreased cooldown. But ideally, I should have still been inside my circle, and then I could have just flopped over the wall, and they'd have no way of really uh, staying with me. But I, I accidentally walked outside of it. You need to pay attention where the border is. I think Hex here. Wow, yeah, he is. He's such a goose. Just, he can't see me. Flop over the wall. And I'm going to get his wolf. He, the game's over for him, essentially. As long as I don't just... I, I was too far away. I was trying to still stay within the circle when I started my queue. To have it on a decreased cooldown. Kent should be coming back to land. We'll be able to pick him up there. Should be like right here. And uh, I think 
move will kill him. If, or at least set up a kill on him. Standing right here to try to maximize my vision I have down the lane. If you stand too close, then you can't see because of the walls. Cuts the vision at sharp angles. He's... I really need some kind of help from Akali. <laughs> I needed anything. She's holding on to her flash and her R. She's just, I guess, hoping I don't die. Which, uh... Normally isn't that bad, but if your teammate has 700 shutdown gold, so if Kench were to kill me, he would have gotten 1,000 gold, that would have been super detrimental to her. Uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> that was way too close for comfort. Kench was super hard to kill, and since he has phase rush, he can stay on top of me. He's very slippery, and he has a lot of CS. He's been farming decently for how much he's been dying. Take the red buff. Long as your Q starts, so for example, even if I Q, look, as long as my Q started, it still went on reduced cooldown, as long as it starts within the circle. You need to get used to fighting uh, within your circle for the most part and putting your Qs, making sure most of the time that you start them from within inside your W circle. That way you get the reduced cooldown, because if your Q goes on the full 8 second cooldown, you're basically fucked. Kindred's only balanced if you're consistently... Uh, getting the reduced cooldown. If you're waiting on the 8 seconds, you're not a champion. It's blind checking bushes. When he senses he's behind, he really needs to avoid those type of situations. Especially if he doesn't know where I am. He should just run back to his turret. This sucks. Kench is just slowing the fuck out of me. I am just so stupid. Dude, that slow is insane. I don't know if they buffed that or what, but... I can't even chase this guy. He can solo me. You can actually solo me. I'm going to set my W after him. Your W is a good tool for vision. Almost like a fake ward. He's like in this bush. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he ran this way. I don't know. I guess he's running. Oh my goodness. That just gave me heartburn. <laughs> Let's back and spend our gold. I'm walking around with way too much. If you can ever afford a full item outright, it's generally bad to be walking around. But since I've been so far ahead, I've been prolonging it since I can solo the Hecarim regardless right now since he's so far behind. Uh, so next item, we can go Navari or we could just go for... And honestly, we'll go for Bort. Kench is tanky enough to justify it and we'll get our tier 2 boots. We'll go ahead and pick up a Berserker Greaves since we're ahead. If you're behind, you can go Steel Plated or uh, Merc Treads. You shouldn't be spending this long in base though. I'm just trying to decide what would be optimal. And we'll go ahead and pick up, we'll pick up a Last Whisper. They're, they're kind of tanky with the Kench and the Hecarim getting the plated steel caps. I'd like some armor pen. I have a lot of physical damage on my Blade of the Rune Kings. Max health damage, my abilities in general are physical damage. So might as well pick it up after the Bork purchase. The enemies are playing really far up. We could definitely punish this. I'm going to lay my W. You see how I'm laying it to where I can fight both camps? So I can just keep them both within inside the circle. I, I keep myself within inside the circle while fighting them for the reduced Q cooldown. I can't stress that enough. On new, on new Kindred players, they tend to not utilize their uh, Qs within their W. So they'll miss out on a bunch of extra AoE damage and attack speed. It's just a huge mistake. You use that for the attack speed on the Q. I'm about to run into Kench. I'm going to wait for my mark to materialize before I kill him. Got him. Since I had marked him, it takes like four or five seconds and it will show you an animation and finish the sound. So I was just having to wait, essentially. That's if, K if Kindred is ever taking her time killing you, it's often because she puts her mark on you and is waiting for it. Do keep in mind that once you are in combat, you can't mark somebody. So if you're, so, so if I was gonna wanted to mark Kench and I started hitting him before I clicked it on him, I'm out of luck. You have to be out of combat to place a fresh mark. And there's a cooldown after you collect a mark. Uh, there's normally a cooldown between the last time you placed it and its overall cooldown. Blues up four seconds. Hecarim's mid. Kench is dead. This is pretty safe. 
I think Hecarim's gonna walk right into me. He's gonna come for his blue buff. I'm gonna put my... I'm just gonna cancel my W so he doesn't see the circle. He'll most likely just walk into me. Yo. It's, it's easy to play from ahead on as a jungler. You just position, position yourself where you know they're gonna be based off where they're moving around the minimap. My red buff slow on her, red smite. Just kill them all. I don't think my red buff, oh, my red buff bird did kill her because I'm level 14, that's pretty crazy. The higher level you are, the more damage red buff burn does. That's fantastic. Kench is running around. I can put my mark on a new target, probably just Hecarim. I just canceled his R. I think I'm gonna kill him. Oh no, he got away, he's too fast. If you enjoy this Kindred Jungle Guide for Preseason 11, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And feel free to come stop by the stream. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.